Today's guest is Kaysen Reed. Kaysen, I think it's fair to say, is probably the person who's had the most impact on my life in a really long time. <laughs> so I'm really in, excited to introduce you guys to him. I uh, appreciate him coming on and talking to you guys. I filmed this while I was out at his home in the big island of Hawaii um, doing his process that he does. And if you want to learn more about that, you can check out his website. It's digitally, digitally minimized.com. Um, he calls it offline aloha, the experiences that he's taking people through. Um, he himself, as he'll share with you, went through quite the journey of kind of Ooh, breaking out of the the matrixy programs of this is how life should be and going through kind of an ultimate low and finding out that life can be really really amazing um, when you are just present and having fun and um, he takes people through that out in Hawaii now and I wish I could put words to how impacting uh, this process was for me but it's, it's hard to find the words you'll hear me try during the episode but yeah really i'm um, grateful to my friend ryan introducing me to this guy um he's yeah he's doing big work bringing people out into nature and helping them reconnect to their higher selves um and just have a good time and play and that sounds so pathetic compared to <laughs> the gravity of the experience I, I do have a hard time explaining it but um hopefully you guys will get a little bit of a gist as you listen to this episode um if you want to watch on youtube you can see us out there in hawaii but if not you can listen on um audio as well but you may hear a little background noise that's why all right much love guys hope you enjoy here is case and reed aloha my friends i'm out here in big island hawaii with case and reed my friend, some of my clients, and I don't know, those of you who have maybe fallen a little close to me heard, have heard me talk about Kaysen. Um, We met through a friend, a mutual friend, and he's from Utah, like me, now lives on the big island of Hawaii, and there's a pretty cool thing that he found here. <laughs> and he's showing people, and he just did that for me, and like, holy shit, <laughs> blew my mind. It was like, holy shit. So, um, Thank you. Yeah. And he agreed to, I was like, just come talk to my people and tell them, <laughs> tell them, tell the people, please. Cause he's, he's a yogi. So he's not going to be like shouting it from the rooftops, you know? So, um, thank you. For yeah. Coming. And so, I don't know, where should we start? Maybe how you got here? <laughs> like, this, do you mind sharing that path? Yeah. I think, uh, it's kind of starting from where I, I started from, um, uh, being in Utah, growing up that way, getting stuck, not stuck, but what way? <laughs> just in the way of, uh, the Utah culture in a way of the way I was raised, which was beautiful, amazing. And I loved it. Like, uh, cause people get the connotation of Utah. It's like, God, oh, it's like, it's very beautiful too. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was, I grew up Mormon, did the mission. Mm -hmm. It was all awesome. Like I fucking great. Like, and it, it led me to uh, my path in life in a way, but then I fell off and started a new way. Yeah. And <laughs> here we are, and uh, I'm super, I've never been just this ecstatic about my life ever because um, <laughs> it's just a lot more, it's me, it's who I am, it's free, it's fun. Yeah. And I'm just here for my moments in my life, and it's just and it's it's here for everybody else too but um yeah. it's a matter of slowing down to really just let our minds take a break and mm -hmm. all the other things because the world's so busy mm -hmm. it's beautiful but it's also just uh <laughs> we don't need to be as distracted as we are yeah and uh in many different ways and uh, yeah but uh there's also beauty on beyond our distraction that we can't see because we're too busy being distracted. And uh, it's very simple in many ways. And yeah. That's, that's my message to, to people is slow down and take your time. Like in Hawaii, you, you just, you have to go slow. <laughs> you, you just automatically <laughs> go slow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the only pace you can really go because uh, you can get really hurt and yeah. <laughs> that's happened a lot to me as well as, as getting hurt out mm -hmm. here and but learning and growing and um, 
yeah, and, and mm -hmm. I'm just I'm grateful for the life I had in Utah because it brought me here. And... Let's go into that more, yeah. <laughs> okay, so like, I'll say real quick, like I was joking with Casey and I was like, dude, you like massively impact my life through like secondhand smoke because I just found out about the stuff you were talking about through my friend and then I started doing it. And I was like, I'm living in a completely different reality right now. So we're going to go, let's, let's go. So when you say, I know you're like, I know that you're in a place now where that path, you see it as all beautiful and, yeah. you know, because you, you've done the growth work on processing that. But at the time, like when you say like the busy, you know, like what was your, tell them what you were doing before you were here yeah. doing this. Um, yeah, no, I was in corporate America. I was working in sales. I mean, it's a very common path in Utah. Like, yeah. We knock, sure. We're good at knocking doors and it's awesome. <laughs> and we're good to talking to people and mm -hmm. sales and yeah, all that. And and that was my quickest way to money because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, money. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. going to, that's going to get me everywhere. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. That's the, the culture I grew up in mm -hmm. uh, was very rich. Um, you know, it was a very rich, lots of money culture and it was beautiful. <laughs> awesome. But you know, you don't know what you don't know. You, you were modeled like that matters like a yeah, lot. Like identity that's, is huge. <laughs> right. you're like, your identity is this and you got to be this and you're going to become this and right. make this money and have more toys and more tokens and more all those, you know. And you did things. it. Oh, yeah. You did it. <laughs> and what did you find? <laughs> you had the nice house and the yeah. nice job and that could, you know, all you did it. And yeah. Climb the ladder and. Uh, and then I jumped off. <laughs> yeah, but, tell us about yeah. why'd you jump off? Well, uh, I started on the phones at a call center, and I kind of climbed my way to the top. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I got this. Like, mm -hmm. I can see my way around all of this. Like, mm -hmm. I know what I need to do to get to where I'm going, and mm -hmm. and I did it. And it just there's three or four levels I climbed, and I became a director of sales, mm -hmm. managing hundreds of people in a call center, mind you, where people just constantly change it's pretty wild energy yeah like, <laughs> and that was my environment and it was awesome because I learned so much mm -hmm. and I really connected to people like you know it, a lot of people that are grown in situations of mine they look down on everybody that doesn't have right what they think is uh better yeah better because they don't have the money or they're poor right. or whatever it is like mm -hmm. a lot of judgments and mm -hmm. comparisons about uh, your culture and society. Um, but yeah, I climbed to the top, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I bought, I bought a BMW, I bought, you mm -hmm. know, a house, I was buying a couple more. And then, <laughs> and then I was pretty, uh, I got to a point where I was pretty just like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. why am I doing this? Making lots of money every year and just living for the weekend, really mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Living for the weekend and uh, doing things for other people that were just not awesome. Like, they were, but, like, nobody wants to sit behind a desk and say, oh, yeah, like, I need more toys. Like, I need, yeah. so I need more money. And, yeah. But we get contrapped in that. And, we think we do, kind of. Yeah, yeah, we do. And when we're in it. For sure, you're right. Yeah, when we're, we're in it, it's like, oh, more this and more. Be, this yeah. car, faster, move, go. Right. All those mores, and it's like. It's just like a, a trick in our mind, in a way, telling us. I mean, they tell us what we want. We want more, and we mm -hmm. think we want more, so we keep thinking we want more. And then, mm -hmm. and then once we've had more, we realize that never the evolution of more never, never ends, ends until yeah. you realize you've had enough. Mm -hmm. And and that finally ended. I was yeah. like, all right, I've had enough. <laughs> like, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. um, they, they pushed me around in, in their own which way, and I was, I was ready to go. And, mm -hmm. and so about 2020, uh, I got really sick. And um, things happened to my body that I didn't think they were, like, going to come back. Because <laughs> when you have this complete, normal, awesome body, and then your lungs stop working, like, your functions stop working, things just, everything just blows up on you in your body. And you just you have to sit still and that's what mm -hmm. happened was mm -hmm. like um i got really sick from whatever happened and um it put me down hard i saw like 
six or seven doctors and they, they didn't, they didn't tell me what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I just was, I, I went out in the desert and I, ha I, I had a van at the time. I still do, but I started living in my van during COVID and I was just like, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get a flip phone while I'm at it and just like chill. <laughs> when did your trip to Bali that you told me about okay. come into that yeah. timeline? Was that while you were still working your job before you got sick? Yeah, that, that was the year before. Can you share that? Yeah. So uh, when I was in Bali, um, so I went to, to the Philippines for work because I went on okay. a mission to the Philippines and mm. went to the Philippines for two days worth of work because <laughs> I was going to move there to run a call center in the oh, Philippines. Wow. Okay. They're like, Kason, go open this. I'm like, Hell yeah, get me out of here. <laughs> right. You're like, sounds like an adventure. <laughs> I definitely like need that. <laughs> another way of avoidance for me and, yeah. and both. But yeah, yeah, now it's like, yeah, adventure, let's go. And and so, but I went over to uh, to Bali in 2019 and uh, I just had a really many powerful experiences. But the one uh, you're referring to was when I, my phone, it, I broke it on my second day of my trip in, in Bali, my smartphone. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It was Whoa. like a three-week trip or <laughs> three something? Three-week trip. Yeah. And I, I also didn't, part of that story was uh, um, my, I had two laptops and one of the laptops broke too because. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> my, Meant to be. It was just like. This is where it started. <laughs> boom. Like in Bali, I was driving down the road, my camera gear on because I just had that, uh -huh. the whole camera gear bag opens uh -huh. and just goes like in the middle of the road. And I'm just like, no. so I'm on a scooter. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's like, I love photography. That's my passion in a way. And thousands of gear on the road. And oh, man. I was like, okay, I didn't die. Cool. Like, get my stuff and carry on. And. The next day, I went to the to this place, this beach. It's it's called Mushroom Island because they like to have fun there. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, I think I've uh, heard of this place. <laughs> and I just didn't care. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm here. This is so amazing. And then uh, I was just being an idiot. Like <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, like my phone's kind of waterproof, so I'll just take a picture because. Right. I wanted to take Real an quick. underwater photo. Right. Real quick. <laughs> I was like, no, dude, you're just, that's not wise. And uh, I broke it. And um, I kind of like, intent, it felt like intentionally, but like, I was just not really being there in a way. I yeah. was like, I was living for that moment to get this thing to right. show people on the internet that I was cool. Right. But, <laughs> but it's a good thing you did because... <laughs> Because that's when this started, I feel like. For like that's sure. no, your first was experience just, was of a... like detoxing <laughs> digitally and connecting to life. Yeah, I know it was a it was a perfect experience. And um so after that, the second day in Bali, or I think second or third day, I'm not really. Um I uh I didn't have a phone and I was there for three weeks and I just kind of uh I went on my own journey and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm on vacation again like because when we go on vacation we still have our technology totally. our jobs our programming awesome and I get it totally but uh, you're still kind of in that yeah. and you're also enjoying a place but you're right. not fully embodied fully there yeah. yeah and that's that's how life is in ways and mm -hmm. but with that experience uh it really kind of put me into uh, a spot of like presence yeah, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, like, I'm on the middle of a rock flying through the sky, and like, <laughs> this is, I don't have to worry about work, like, yeah. my thing's broke, like. It's like you look, you looked up, like you opened yeah. your eyes and just like, <laughs> remembered, <laughs> that, like, life exists, and holy, like a more, um, you had a better zoomed out perspective, because you weren't so zoomed in yeah. on the phone, and the thoughts and the, all the thoughts that come after the phone and oh I better text so and so back and shit did I, I haven't checked my email in a couple of days I better check that yeah you didn't, it was just all gone yeah so you could just be like oh yeah <laughs> life all right so yeah. so the, the, basically three weeks you went three weeks straight with just you check in on your laptop or whatever but throughout the day you were like just there fully there yeah I just right, I just before it started broke to a point that I knew I had in me before 
okay. before I was so wired. Right, right. Because right. I was just used to working, reacting, uh, like comparing, judging, all those things. Mm -hmm. And that broke away for like three weeks. Right. And it's like, whoa. Yeah, so that was like in <laughs> entry point number one to where we are now, right? <laughs> then you went back to, yeah. went back into it, as we do. For sure. Because we have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's part of life, and yes. I'm grateful for it because uh -huh. that has gotten to me where I am now. And yeah, I'm beautiful. joking about the have to. We don't have to, but <laughs> we feel way, like we do in yeah. a way. Yeah, yeah, and it takes time yeah. for things to we integrate. Don't have to, but you, you get to do what you get to do. Right. Okay, so, so. you go back to work. You get yeah, sick. Yeah, I went back You're to like work. Um, living in the van now. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, just it was another year out there. Like, this was 2019. Did you go all over the place? Where'd you no, go? No, I just went to the Philippines. Or, no, no yeah, van. we're talking about the van. Yeah. Um, no, in the van. So, yeah, I, I was airbnb being my house and, okay. uh, to a couple from Louisiana. Mm. And <laughs> um, they were awesome people, but, like, it was just, it was, yeah, it was a, <laughs> a, a wild thing. Some Utah boy and some Louisiana people. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's way more to this story. <laughs> okay. there, there's a lot. They're beautiful people. I love them. Um, this, we didn't mix. And okay. It was a good time. But okay. They were going to rent my house when I left to the Philippines. and Yeah. So, but, uh, so they were living with me as well. Okay. Three of them. A couple okay. and a, a five-year-old. and. Um, yeah, I, I, I moved into my van when they moved into my, like, two months after me living with them in my house. Okay. So I'm like, oh, well, it's just, I'm going to go travel and work and, yeah. you know, it's COVID. And so I went down south and mostly to, like, uh, St. George and, um, like, that kind of area. Yeah, just out in the desert, kind of red rocks. And yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's when I was, like, had that. And then, um, no, this is an, another part of that was... Uh, was big because uh, this is really what kind of like kicked me hard in the in the first and um, I was with them and I was just kind of tired of it I was like oh I just I need to go take a break like yeah. I'm gonna go smoke a joint and read a book in the mm -hmm. mountains and mm -hmm. and just be away because mm -hmm. it's just how it is um, mm -hmm. but it was a it was a snowy night and in, uh, in December um, this was uh, like going into 2020. Um, I was just right, drove my van at Provo Canyon, and I was just mm -hmm. like chilling, cruising. Mm -hmm. You know, needed to be outside and and get some air. And uh, I came up on Nuns Park. As you go to Provo, you go down and mm -hmm. and uh, I turned the corner, and I found a suicide. And <laughs> like uh, that was. Uh, really and really challenging because it was it was just like whoa like if I would have been here two minutes before this I could have saved that person's life and you know I kept like there was a lot going on in that moment of you know just barely missed the person and I felt so much pain and sorrow for that person because <laughs> nobody deserves that yeah. but it happens yeah. uh, um, he was just being too hard on himself or something, but that was the first thing that really kicked me in into where I am now. Mm. And uh, I remember seeing him, and I was like, "I love you. I'm sorry. I will never let this happen to anybody or anybody I know, or I do whatever I can to prevent this." And mm -hmm. and just carried on after you know a little while, and it was pretty. I had to call the cops and. Mm -hmm. um, all that stuff and and they carried on um, but that really shook me because yeah. I'm like whoa like I didn't really tell anybody because mm. I mean I, I was I've been a very quiet reserved observer in mm -hmm. many ways mm -hmm. um, I like I, people used to say like Kason doesn't really talk <laughs> but I'm more just like uh, references like a wise man once said nothing right he just observed and right and that's kind of my persona. But yeah, that, that happened. And, uh, and then, yeah, I traveled in my van through, through Utah, Montana, Idaho. Um, I did 15 national parks in, mm -hmm. in like a, in like, uh, like two months. Cause mm -hmm. I was just living in my foot in my van, had my flip phone 
and I was like, holy shit, I feel like I'm in Bali again. Like, wow. Wow. <laughs> I have that connection. Yeah, the connection, that presence, that mm -hmm. um, stillness mm -hmm. that uh, you have when you're on vacation and your mind isn't clinging to mm -hmm. the internet or other things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was really fun. It was a, it was a very powerful part of my life. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, 2020, when I got really sick, I, you know, I just was very still with myself. Um, I was, I was, while I was in my job, I was getting off of prescriptions. I was on Xanax, Adderall, <laughs> like <laughs> all those, some of the different things. And mm -hmm. just, I was on it for several years, like two or three years. Cause it was just, that made me c continue to be able to focus and keep up with my job. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, during 2020, I put everything down. I was like, I'm done Threw it out mm -hmm. the window. Like a after I saw that kid and then I got really sick because, um, I, I just didn't want to feel that pain. I didn't need to, um, mm -hmm. there's so much pain in my body from, I feel like suppression or mm -hmm. depression reaction, um, trying to keep up with yeah. uh, the people at work and right. society and the norms and the things that create uh, stress for us. Mm -hmm. So I kind of threw it all out and I was sober all of 2020, which um, was, isn't hard for me to do because I'm pretty normally a sober kid. I do like to share cannabis yoga <laughs> <laughs> and that, but more intentionally, but I put it all down and my body just, I sat in stillness when I was in those parks mm -hmm. and read books, sat by the fire and just was like, I just want my body to be normal again. Yeah. Cause yeah. there was times that I, I, um, so I was watching this Netflix video. It was, uh, it was Lance Armstrong. Mm. And, um, what happened to me was uh, my testicles turned into tennis balls <laughs> and <laughs> like, Looking back, I could laugh at this now because it is kind of funny, but like I, I was watching that video and I was like, I think I might have cancer, like testicular right. cancer because the doctors, right. they didn't tell me what was wrong. No. And so that kind of really started this fear in my body. And so right, right. I had to go find stillness and right. uh, just that's what I was told was like, hey, just go be in your van, go be alone take a break from women for a long time, like a year or whatever, because I was also in toxic relationships and just, I was really addicted to sex and other things. And, <laughs> and, and also, yeah, I mean, I, I told you, but I had lost my virginity when I was 31. Like, so that was like uh, a lot to come out and took me down this path of, I think a lot of men go down because mm -hmm. it's, um, I mean, the way, the world portrays sex is, is it programs minds to do some of that stuff, right. which is, it's how it works. But mm -hmm. so, so many addictions and uh, things, but I just sat still for the year in my van. I cut off a really toxic relationship I had with uh, a woman. And, and then it started to make me realize, oh, you case in you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, that's the best when we have that moment. It's the best moment ever. <laughs> yeah. So, so that helped a lot. And uh, it helped me just kind of um, just be grateful that my body was slowly coming back. And uh, I was going to have my body back and I could do the things I wanted to do because I couldn't I couldn't go do things like hiking. I had so much inflammation in my stomach. I couldn't breathe at times and I was just like pushing through all that. And then yeah. it's like, dude, no, you can't like, you gotta, you gotta fix your stomach, like you got mm -hmm. problems. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, over that time I, I got things fixed and it took, I mean, still am, but it was pretty bad to a point where, I mean, I really just was drinking fluids for like days and Damn. Um, I couldn't sure. really eat food. And I was just like, yeah, you don't need it. You're, your body needs to reset like yeah. and so it was a lot of stress from the job um yeah in that job I was managing hundreds of people and yeah so it was uh, it was a lot of stress that I just like shoved down mm -hmm. and never really uh looked at or got it out because right. we're busy and right. oh we move on and we don't stop to to be we just mm -hmm. go go and that's okay but I realized 
um, like I, I was telling you, I was like, the universe kicked me in the balls and <laughs> it woke me up and it was, uh, it was the best thing that it could have ever happened to me. And yeah. I'm so grateful because it's brought me to here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So speaking of here in Big Island, <laughs> thank you for sharing all that, by the way. It's really yeah. powerful. There's so many like who can't relate to some part of that, you know? So yeah. thank you. And, um, yeah, so you, let's let's shift into coming to Hawaii and then, like, kind of the evolution of, like, just being here for a while and then kind of feeling that call or pull or creative interest or, you know, how mm -hmm. it, the energy just pulls you to, like, what you're doing and then we can kind of get into how you see things and <laughs> however you want to describe what you're doing because it's, it's a little hard to describe because it's all, in, it's, like, energetic. You just experience yeah. it and you're, like, Oh, you know, so he just like shows you and drops you into it. He doesn't really have to explain it, you know? Yeah. So it's hard to explain because I, we went to this dance last night and I was like, there's no possible way you could have ever explained to me what I just experienced because I had no comprehension that that energy even exists. It was like so conscious and beautiful. I've never seen a group of humans like that. Like, I mean, I've been to like, ecstatic dances or i've never been to that that was something <laughs> really different it was like all the what do they say like the old i heard somewhere like i think it was a podcast you sent me on like huna hawaiian spirituality she was saying oh, like yeah, like the old souls tend to end up here the <laughs> the super conscious beings and that's what it felt like i was just like oh you guys all congregate here like <laughs> there's so many of us like wow you know <laughs> it's like I, and it's just beautiful beyond like beyond my experience I've ever had with others just like such clear pure communication and honesty and vulnerability <laughs> and like wow but okay so let's come back to like you so you came out on your journey you ended up here and I don't know just you can kind of yeah share. so uh in 20, the middle of 2020 I sold my house uh not middle but like September I sold my house and I'm like you know what like if I'm gonna die like <laughs> I'm not gonna die in this in this box <laughs> yeah because we already die in another box and yeah <laughs> but um so i sold my house i lived in vineyard i had a nice house i didn't have any mortgage like it was i had renters all i was always taken care of so it was yeah. like this blessing but mm -hmm. i just didn't appreciate that so um i sold all my belongings and and i was like okay i'm done like yeah if if, we're, if this is gonna go the way it's gonna go and we're not going to live our lives anymore. Like I'm going to go live a life worth living because mm -hmm. when I was down really sick, like I was like, if you let me go live the life I'm supposed to live, I will go fucking live that life. And <laughs> you kept your word. You kept your word. All right. We're getting there. <laughs> I mean, you've already, you'd already really started at that point. Yeah. But now it, you just really next leveled the whole, you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you continue. <laughs> um, so yeah, my my journey began here by uh, I went to Sedona, and I took some mushrooms there because I was going to buy a house in Sedona. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm gonna, and I, I'd been sober for this whole time in the van and all that, and I mm -hmm. haven't touched any medicine or any alcohol because, mm -hmm. and so I went there and uh, I took some mushrooms and everything turned into kind of this like, this like joke or like um uh, everything just dro the seriousness dropped out of me in a way and i was like hmm. oh cool so my mind was like completely still and um i was hiking and i looked up and in the clouds like i saw the big island it was in the shape of a cloud like cool. <laughs> i started laughing i was like okay this is a joke like because <laughs> I'm, I'm so grateful to be where I'm at That's in that cool. position of like, oh my God, I'm alive again. Like, yeah. got my body back. And yeah. this, New we forget. Life. <laughs> yeah. We forget how, how awesome these things are because we're just, yeah. you know, every day. But it was all that and the energy of Sedona and the, the beauty of nature and like just being in my van. And, and it was a big island. I just started laughing. I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. Like, and then I kept walking and I picked up a rock <laughs> and it was the shape of the big island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, I just started laughing and the friend I was with, uh, like, like, what are you laughing about? And I'm just like, 
doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and because, uh, yeah, it was just this trip for me. And I was like, OK, because I had been looking at places to live in Hawaii for because mm. I came here as a kid a lot with my family. Yeah. And I fell in love with it as a kid. And uh, and I never wanted to leave because I was mm. like, why right. would I why would I want to leave? Right. <laughs> So after that, I, I ended up coming out here um, and uh, it took me several months, but I was still working my job mm. in 2021 because okay. I, I was just dragging it along. I thought, right. oh, oh, Safety like, net. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> what we do and it was pretty kosher and cool. And, mm -hmm. um, so the day I, I got fired from my 12 year career in sales as a director of <laughs> director of sales and <laughs> managing people like. I bought a house in Hawaii. Mm. <laughs> I bought an Airbnb and I was like, okay, like this, I have an idea because no one wants to listen to me and I know what is yeah. kind of awesome and I want to share what I can yeah. give from my experience by being in corporate America and technology and Yeah. You're like, I things. found something not only kind of cool, but like <laughs> life changingly <laughs> awesome here. <laughs> yeah, you knew that. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what I found, and it was mm -hmm. it was uh, it, I mean it was a lot of work to get to this point in so many ways, and mm -hmm. and challenges came up, and but I, I that day I closed my house and or I closed down this house, I got fired, and and that was the freest I had ever uh, felt. Yeah, how perfect of timing! It was like chapter close, chapter begins. <laughs> in a long time, Whoop. I was like, <laughs> just flip the page. There we go. Okay, so um. Let's talk about what you started creating. Like maybe, maybe we'll see. I might show you guys around a little bit after this. We're here at, at that place he's talking about right now. But you know, you've got all of these little signs all on the outside of your house. You got a self love mirror. Like, yeah. and I'm sure a lot of that's for you. It probably was for originally sure. for you. Yeah. But you know, what, what are you doing for people now? Where, yeah. What did you decide to do? You tell them. And I'll, sure. I'll, I'll tell you too. You know, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so for me, I, I, I really found this uh, level of love and presence um, in my life through being so still. Of like, isn't it just kind of wonderful that we're kind of, we're alive? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, just that gratitude for being alive and uh, being marveled at it. So I really embodied that life um, for myself. I, I, like I said, I stopped dating women for, you know, a little over a year. So I have my problems. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's that, that's mine. I, I do not, I shouldn't, and I can't go there now. Like, so yeah, when I got out yeah. here, I was like, you, everything, you know, out here, it's very, like I told you, it's very, things are very clingy. Like you chase or the, the frequencies are so high that it's yeah, like, right. you know, everything pulls its way. But mm -hmm. so out here, I, I stopped chasing everything. I kind of like, I stopped working my job. Uh, I wasn't dating women because I wasn't ready for that or capable. And uh, I just put it all down and I was like, okay, take your time. Like, there's no rush, there's no race, this isn't a competition. Like, you've been working your ass off for 12 years, like, you can, you can take a break. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's really what I did for myself was took this break because I was so, you know, so many programs that we have on our phones, those programs can go into our minds and make things happen to us and keep our minds so busy. Yeah. And I was coming out of a lot of that, like, yeah. you know, clinging, because what I, what I was telling you, like the Buddha, he taught like clinging is the root of all of our suffering. Like yeah. he teaches that whatever we cling to, we are going to suffer. So whether it's the past, the future, or in my mind, I was clinging to my job, the internet, women, mm -hmm. just all these things were clinging. Like I was like, oh, I can't live without these things. But mm -hmm. over time, I really realized those and, and reprogrammed that way because um, I was just, the wishful thinking wasn't, it's not, wasn't for me. Like, so uh, I really took the time to slow my mind down. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And take my time off technology too, because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, like I'm here now. Um, things are going good right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't need to worry about 
money right now. Um, I just need to like take the time and that's yeah. that's really what this island taught me. Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, Kaysen, slow down or you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I had a couple instances out here where that almost happened. Like, mm -hmm. it's like oh my gosh, like. Yeah, it's pretty death. wild out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's no joke. I, I was like, for the first time, afraid to kind of fully go in the ocean ever. Because I was like, that thing's going to suck me out to sea. Like, it's pulling hard. It's yeah. wild out here. It's jungle. It's crazy out here. So, yeah, I can see that. That's a good teacher. Yeah. And not to mention just all the beauty here. It, like, you, I mean, I was telling him, like, uh, I mean, most of you guys know I'm a pretty big proponent of psychedelics used in the right set and setting. But I'm like, you don't. It's like it is a, a microdose on LSD out here. Like that's just how you feel all the time. You don't even need any anything. You're just already there. It's just it slows you down. Just just being here, you're just like you can't yeah. stop looking around and being present. It's just like, and if you really do release your mind, which is a lot of what you teach people, it's just like uh, the whole world opens up to you, and you realize like everything is right there in the present moment, and you stop wanting to be out of that. Yeah. And what I meant by secondhand smoke was <laughs> our friend, our mutual friend, Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Maybe you'll watch this. Um, but Ryan um, was telling me, he's like, dude, this guy, Kaysen, he's on to something. Like, it's like, it's like changing my life. He's like, like just really, really hone in on focus on like pure presence. No thoughts, no, he's no just phone, no nothing. Like just right here, right now, that's it, you know? And so I started doing that and, you know, these guys listen to a lot of Ram Dass and Alan Watts and I'm getting some from Ryan and some from Kaysen and I'm getting all that going and read the way of Zen by Alan Watts and just like was really actively practicing that even just in my house, in my car, like getting into the shower with nothing, not thinking about stuff in the shower, just being in the shower, just I'm washing my arm right now and just like fully being there. Yeah. And I went through like a next level con of consciousness that I didn't know existed experience, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. And I was like, okay. okay. And a lot started to open up for me. Like if any of you guys follow me on social, you may have noticed like I was kind of, some, I don't know, a lot probably most people didn't notice, but some 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 people told me they did notice. They're like, dude, where'd you go? Like, <laughs> you know, I usually have like 10 posts in between my Friday podcast. <laughs> One time there was just back to back, you know, I hadn't been on there all week. And um, yeah, it was, I didn't want to be on there because it was so beautiful being in the present moment and like not even in my thoughts, yeah. you know, not even. Yeah. And so I, it's not that thoughts are bad. It's just, I was so much more selective with yeah. how long I was willing to go down certain rabbit holes because I could, it's just so much higher consciousness when you're fully present mm. that that felt less good. It felt like, Oh, okay. I could just, I started using the <laughs> mantra. It doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of like you said about your big Island rock. Like, yeah. I don't know. That just came through for me. It was just like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Cause I'll get on these big trying to solve all the problems of the world. And why do humans behave in such a way and get, get <laughs> lost in these, you know, things. And I just started saying, I'm like, man, why do people blah, 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 you know, and I get this big <laughs> thing with it. And then I go, it doesn't matter. And I would just laugh. And I would just like be back. And I was like, wow. And, and the cool thing was that, like, my ability to solve problems was, like, so much easier. I didn't ha I don't, you don't really have to yeah. go into that energy very much is what I learned. I was so fixated on, like, problem solving and how, you know, intention and focus and how I want things to go and, like, what needs to be done and, you know, what direction am I headed and, mm. you know, solving the problems of humanity and just all, <laughs> all this stuff and I learned that I could just stuff would just make sense and eat with ease if I just yeah. stayed more in the present yeah. moment. And that did involve being off my phone a lot. You know, it did. It, it opened me up to a place of like, I don't even know if I want to do that anymore. Cause now I'm sucking everybody else off there onto their phones too, you know? And yeah. I really sat with that for a minute. Um, to be honest, still sitting with it, you know, right. yeah, but so. for me, it's like, I'm just feeling it out and, if you follow me on social, you know, I always, I always come from my heart and my soul and aim to share helpful things for people. And 
And I'll keep doing that when it feels aligned, but the nice thing is like, there's no need to, you right. know, if a week goes by and it just doesn't feel aligned, then I just don't. <laughs> and if 10 of them feel aligned that day, I just, then it does, you know? Yeah. And well, that's beautiful too. Yeah. I'm just really, it's taught me to really just trust mm. and just not worry about stuff as much. <laughs> You know, I still do it. I'll be like, oh, I wonder how my kids are doing with that thing, you know. And then I'm like, I'll let it go. I don't know. I'm not with them right now. Right. I'll just ask them when I get there, you know. And yeah. so, and then I'm missing the present moment when I'm off worrying yeah, about that. Thinking about, you're clinging to what, all those other things. That right. All these stories. and Stories you can't control. Right. And so it's it's just really next level. My uh, Catherine Dixon, who I've told you about, and she's been on the podcast and if you know me or work with me, you've heard about Catherine a ton and she talks about the realms of power. Mm -hmm. um, it's her version of Byron Katie's three businesses. So there's my realm of power, other people's like their realm of power. Mm -hmm. And then God's realm of power or the universe, like the trees and plants and stars and that kind of stuff. And the only thing that you can control at all is your realm of power. And so yeah. your thoughts, feelings, actions, but also included that is the future and the past are also outside of your realm of power you have no control over those at all you have not yeah. there's nothing you right. can do so all you have is yourself in the present moment and that's the only thing you can do anything about totally you know and so this is just next level my ability to be able to be there more like really understand what that means i don't mm. i think i kinda well there's levels of it got it but i'm so, not like yeah yeah there's levels of love there's levels of being present there's yeah. levels of everything and yeah like, like i said to you like you don't know what you don't know and you don't understand what you don't understand and that's yeah. all okay but yeah there's there's different people that live different lives and and that's needed in a, in a yeah. world that we live in because you know we can't all mm -hmm. live the same life and yeah so but yeah. we can be more present in it and totally. whatever Simply. you're doing, you know, it's just staying out of our, getting lost in our minds. To me, that's been the biggest yeah. thing is like not being lost in my mind. Yeah. On to, it's, it's, that's it's all huge. it is really. And it's been so heart opening because that's what will happen. And even just being out here, everyone's so present that I've met. Yeah. And maybe that's the crew you keep around, obviously, <laughs> but like, it's so present that it's almost weird, which is sad. Yeah. Like, it's just as people it's are foreign. fully locked in with you. Yeah. And like, it almost takes me off guard. I'm like, oh, okay, we're like really it's connecting. Not, like, we are it. like making full <laughs> eye contact and talking the whole time. Oh, yeah. hi. <laughs> you know, it's been a little like that with people. And I've never seen so many free souls in my life. Like. It's funny, like we we were talking, we judge it as like being hippies or yeah. you know, but it's like, no, that's not that's not that's not that will block you from being able to see what's actually going on. Like yeah. it's people who are they 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 really unplugged from the matrix. A lot of us like <laughs> see the matrix but still play in it. For sure. And and there's that's... people who completely unplugged and it's really cool to talk to them, and that's who you introduce people to when they come out here that's who you've introduced me to and i'm gr really grateful for that because these are your friends and your people that you see all the time and it's been really there's no better teacher than an immersion experience there's no better way to learn and just being around people like that is like oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah humans can be like this i mm. forgot humans can be like this you know like so present so honest so honest yeah so vulnerable no, it's not it doesn't seem like vulnerability it's just how they they just tell everything they just are yeah they're just free and free and, yeah and free in their minds and, right uh, <clears throat> and that's that's a big part of it all like if we're not free in our minds and we're, we're trapped in our minds but we're not necessarily trapped but you know we're we're just there's levels of being free too there's levels mm -hmm. of presence you be free like and levels like out of judgment comparison competition like and so um i mean ram das he he taught me a lot out here he just said um the game is not to be high but to be free all the time in the mind like because mm -hmm. people you know and once you're free in the mind yeah you can free up your your body starts totally. to free up and totally that's why these dancers out here are like 
you're just like, whoa, like. So free. That's the only best word I can use. Yeah. Not inhibited at all. Like, no. just completely free to be them and connect with others because of that at a deeper level because they're not thinking about them, yeah. really. They're just fully here, you yeah. know, fully in flow with people and themselves, and it's really cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful because, uh, I mean, there's a lot of that out here, and, and that was my teacher, mm -hmm. you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I came out here, and I, I, bought, I bought a house, and, and then I did this thing, and I'm like, I'm going to make this place for people to have the experience that I'm experiencing because mm -hmm. this changed my life so dramatically, and yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, hard, it's so hard to explain to people because they're just like, well, what is it? And it's like, well, <clears throat> it's a lot of things that are wonderful and different and... There's it's... no way you can give it the credit it's due. It's just, it's energetic. You, yeah. I mean, our friend Ryan, like, just he let he stayed here for ended up staying here for like a month and a half. He didn't want to leave. You know, he was just like, "Yup, got it. This is better." <laughs> Not to compare, but it's just it's hard to explain what you're doing because it's just you see this whole different level of consciousness that human, a bunch of human beings are living on and you recognize that human beings are not living in that level of consciousness and you're like oh I didn't really totally know this was available yeah. you know and all these guys seem to know that and thanks for the intro you know <laughs> like oh you know so it's, it's hard sure. to put words on it because it's it's a I would say it's just to me if I had to put words on it is um experiencing a level of consciousness that I didn't know was available mm -hmm. and finding out that there's a bunch of people that already are, know that and are doing yeah. that and are all in that together. And it's like, you know, all of us aren't going to live here or Bali or somewhere like that, but it doesn't matter. Like I, it already massively impacted my life before I got here, just practicing yeah. what you're teaching here. But then this was kind of like the next level <laughs> experience because we went to some really cool places that I don't want to say because you yeah. kind of like the element of surprise. But it was like, yeah, you, a goal accomplished. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so he's got yeah some cool stuff up. But it's also just you teaching what you learn and just yeah. the energy that you're in now is like, I was telling him last night, I'm like, damn, like, good job on self-healing. Like, I'm like, if you really, really only started, like, the heart of your journey in 2020, like, I don't know that many, because I'm so deep into, like, transformation work and mindset and, like, I do a lot of my own work, like, constantly. Like, I, like, I don't, how do I say this? I just haven't met anybody who started their journey two years ago that I'm, like, learning stuff from, like, <laughs> oh, okay, shit, you know, like, it the this this island yeah. everything grows easily here like yeah they put a freaking stick in the ground and it grows a tree we went to this yeah. lady's house yesterday and she's like oh here's some papaya trees that grew out of my compost bin and oh oh look another banana tree oh look <laughs> we stuck the coconut on the ground and now there's a coconut tree it's just like magical you know and i think nature is a good um symbol yeah. it's telling us it's like that's what so happens true. to humans here i think too if they're open yeah and they're paying attention and they're with it like you just it's it's a very conducive environment for growth and what i mean by growth is really just remembering like like being one with nature meaning our natures well you know you're yeah. one with nature here but like you're with your true nature yeah all right and it just does that you like i mean you did your own work too For sure you, know, you yeah. could have gotten on dating apps and got back on yeah, adderall yeah. and built your little <laughs> airbnb empire out here and like you could have chosen totally. that but you didn't you chose to um dive in tune in instead of tune yeah. out yeah you just found some let cool go stuff. yeah yeah. Just, yeah but just let go yeah that's terrifying yeah. for most people no, it is. It's a scary yeah. thing to be like, oh, I've had this job for 12 years and I'm going to quit. And, right. But it's also a beautiful thing because, you know, uh, it, we never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the consequences of good fortune, we'd never know that. Like, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and the good thing is, like, you know, I was saying, like, obviously, like, it's beautiful that you do this yeah. because you're in the so deep in the depths of it that yeah. you can come back and share wisdom sure. with us and that's, show that's, us 
pieces of it. Wonderful. And then we come back into our regular lives if we choose to do that. And most people probably will. And, but you have more, pre- you have, it's like a, we're in the, sorry, but most everybody, like, I don't think it's just mainland U S I think it's a lot of places. Like we're so busy. That's what another, a lady we visited with yesterday that moved here from California and they live are living off the land and have goats and chickens and all these vegetables and fruit trees. And it's really cool. But she was saying like, when I, I was like, when you go back to California, what's your experience of the people, you know, what just like, just what's your experience of them? And she's like, so busy. Just their minds are so busy. And she's like, it took me a while to detox that out here, you know? And anyway, like, so let's say you go back to your, life like you're gonna go back to your life with so much more presence and awareness yeah. awareness of self not needing to be you know, that's the effect hawaii's always had on me is like what am i doing yeah. why am i what <laughs> whoa why am i in this like frenzied busy that was my first experience sure. of maui really made an impact on me and i still got into it way too much you know but it did help yeah you know and then when i came back to big island and Kauai this past October I had the same thing it was like you know you don't have to do busy stuff ever like, yeah. it's okay you can create your life so that you don't have to be busy all the time it had that impact me on me again and coming here with you it's like the uh, Hawaii at least for me already has that impact on me and then on top of it you're teaching the lessons you learned from being in the depths of that for an extended amount of time yeah really letting go yeah. So it like creates kind of this balance from that busy, busy, busy to like, you're like not busy, yeah. you know? And it's like helps for sure. give us that place of like more presence in whatever we are doing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing of balance. Like mm-hmm. not everybody can, can do what I do or did and, and that's mm-hmm. okay. But I also tell people like, like comparison is the thief of joy of all your joy. You're going to compare all day long, like you're never going to be satisfied. And and the world we live in kind of encourages that. And and so I think learning, I mean, that was one of the things like getting off the internet, you know, I, 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 I out here, I I really leave, I leave my phone at home. Um, most of the times I just listen to the radio. I just cruise and I'm like, I feel like it's 1993. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it's 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 just now for the yeah. most part like yeah and uh yeah just taking a break from it all and mm-hmm. for me I, I just not everybody belongs on the internet all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and that's okay but we can really take our breaks from there where we don't need to be yeah like you're wonderful at what you're doing mm-hmm. like for me I'm I like mm-hmm. I'm wonderful at being present in a yard and like working with nature like mm-hmm. Uh, when I look at screens, I, I don't like them. Mm-hmm. I just, so I minimize, you know, I stopped using a lot of things. You know, yeah. I, I stopped using social media. I stopped using dating apps. Like, mm-hmm. you know, most men look at porn because of how infiltrated porn is on yeah. humanity mm-hmm. and they get addicted. And I've had that path before, but I don't even, that I doesn't even come across my mind anymore. And it's awesome. like, there's so many of these things that we feed our minds and, um, you know, uh, a mind that thinks of all the time has nothing to think about, but thoughts like, mm-hmm. cause, and we're just feeding our minds things to think about. And right. I think that's a big portion uh-huh. of what we're seeing in this world is mm-hmm. like, um, like I told you, um, if we, if we'd stop feeding our mind McDonald's, like, yeah. cause we feed our mind McDonald's and I'm not judging any of this. Yeah. They did this to us in a yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> none of us signed up for it so I, I like people to understand like hey it's not your, like but it also is because we choose yeah. to go on those apps those things every day yeah. and we know the outcome of how we're going to feel after those after we use those apps and right. you know when you know when you look at your phone before you go to bed and you're scrolling through something deep right and it's blue light in your eyes right. and it's <laughs> you're just wide awake again and then you can't go to sleep because it's because it's we're, we're just that's we're feeding our mind McDonald's every mm-hmm. so much time. And, yeah. And that's where I, you know, that's where I like to, to help people see the difference because, because paradise, this is paradise in a way yeah. like paradise is yeah. Hawaii. 
but also paradise is a construct and it's also in our in our minds and totally. in, in our state of being right like love is a state of being and you are when you're in love you're being in that right in that energy of right. love and uh so yeah just allowing people to I noticed my programs and what helped me and, and mm -hmm. uh, because I really just unplugged, got a flip phone mm -hmm. and I, I got into yoga mm -hmm. and I started teaching yoga and that's how we met was, you know, um, teaching yoga in Utah and uh, that's what I, I learned. I went and got trained in 2021 right after my thing and mm -hmm. I was a yoga teacher. I was like, what, <laughs> what yeah. am I doing? Like, but I loved it. I was like, yeah. I was excited about it. I was like, I, my body feels so good again right. like and for me yoga was like self-love for my body right because people go into yoga and they're like oh this will and a lot of men do too because they're comparing they're competing and they're mm -hmm. judging and there's nothing against that it's just how we can naturally be mm -hmm. so for me it was like okay if i can just slow down my mind mm -hmm. i can open up my heart right. and it can all function together rather than like judging the teacher or like right. reacting to the song or right. the yoga teacher says something and I'm like, oh, what an idiot. Like, cause we, we just naturally as humans, we judge a lot. Yeah. Cause yeah. again, the internet makes us do a lot of different things and so do our environments. Yeah. Um, that we're not supposed to naturally consume and do and you yeah. know, humans aren't meant to stare at screens for long times. Right. And I get, we have to do it, but there's also a consequence to some of these things. And, totally. Um, to be completely still, um, that's something I really have experienced out here. And it's, you know, it's it's another, I feel like sometimes I'm on another planet and I'm not like using things all the time. I'm not using substances. Like you have the ocean and all these other things that are just mind blowing. I mean, like the, the lava today, we went to a lava, yeah, I said the word. <laughs> wow, a lot. <laughs> That's all I could get out. Like, I didn't want to. I didn't want to use any other words for a minute. I was just like, there are no words. Just yeah, unreal, breathtaking, like awe-inspiring experiences. You know. Yeah, and so like all those things, and what what I what I'm doing now is putting them all together. Like yeah. all my my things um, to help people, yeah. you know, cause like I was fortunate to be like given a second life. It feels like from, you know, I probably was overreacting a lot, but I was in so much fear back then. And yeah. I, that's a big thing in society today is just so much fear. Like mm -hmm. the things online are meant to like yeah. distract Massive us. Anxiety, but anxiety is just fear. <laughs> and scare us. <laughs> and you know, there are scary things, but like, the world's always been pretty crazy, but it's also always been pretty beautiful. Yeah. Like, so um, by helping people take a break from what they really don't need to put in their minds yeah. for a week or a couple of days, um, mm -hmm. you can really slow down and be like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. I'm, I'm here. I'm alive. Yeah. It take, takes a little while, but like, yeah. you know, it's a... Uh, you can really start to feel your presence and you don't have to worry about anything while you're here. It's all kind of taken care of. Like you just put right. your, you know, you can call your friends that are or your, your kids yeah. and this and that. But I, I just encourage like, Hey, yeah. we don't need the internet at the fucking beach. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, but I, I understand that people do that and maybe they do need it. But yeah. while you're on vacation, if you're going to be on vacation, be on vacation yeah. and make it the best vacation. Cause yeah, you just might not make it another day or whatever, whatever happens. So, well, and it's different than a vacation. It's like a consciousness. Oh, you called because when I got to the dancing last night, I was like, "What? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> this is not what I was expecting at all." <laughs> I was like, "What? Where am I? Like, what is this thing?" You know, I thought it was just gonna be some people hanging out dancing. That's not. No, it was not just. I mean, it was, but it was like really conscious. And you're like, yeah. This is like a spiritual playground here. <laughs> I was like, wow, I like that. <laughs> that sounds nice. But um, it's, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But I, I, it for me, it's been um, a really great, like I, I love my life. You know, I, I've never not had like a deep, 
love for life. Like, I love yeah. life. Like, I'm like, yep, sign me up for another million. This is a <laughs> crazy adventure. If you like surprises and adventure and like, oh, no, everything's horrible. And wow, it's amazing. I mean, that's the yeah. adventure of a lifetime, Earth life. Um, I've always loved it. But like, yeah, it's it's a remembering. Like, when you talked about getting out of your mind and then your heart. and To me, that's just like flow state like just completely yeah. like you're completely you like you're you're not thinking about anything you're just like fully you and like there's so much time for that and what you're doing for people and it's like you can remember yourself and when when you're in that space of pure awareness you just notice everything with ease like i yeah. think that's why you were able to help your gut so much and your body it's just like oh of course like if you're in pure presence you're like wow that really fucked with me yeah. or wow that fucked with me for like two or three days actually or yeah. wow okay i feel really i'm like my body is saying eat more of that like okay and you start to notice those things and you can you can navigate yourself with so much more ease you don't yeah. have to depend on others like what should i do what should i, I mean it's always like nice to hear other viewpoints and sometimes it's like oh shit thank you for that, that I, <laughs> I needed your viewpoint you know that was really totally. helpful but at the same time like you're just able to manage yourself and and find your way on most things like yeah. pretty easily because you just notice everything you're like huh that's interesting. I'm going into that little, because it's because when you're used to presence, when you go out of it, you notice it more, and you're like, oh, sure. I'm doing that thing where I, where I get angry or self righteous or I get fearful, like, huh? And yeah. you, and then you can just be like, you can just solve it so quickly because you're just like, maybe you might let it go the first time, but you noticed it. Then you might be like, oh, that's a pattern. What is that? Oh, you're afraid. Oh, you got that fear, you know, and you just yeah. find it and you just are like, that's not true. Like, you don't need to be afraid of that. Like, you, you love you. You got you. Okay, cool. And then you just like heal stuff so quickly, yeah. you know, from that place of awareness. So it's, um, I've had that with my body for a long time, but I haven't had that with, um, where I allow my mind to go mm. as much. Right. Yeah. So I got like a lot of, yeah, that's the awareness. thing. Awareness there no that's that's awesome too because that's mm -hmm. it's it can go both ways like mm -hmm. stillness in the body stillness in the mind mm -hmm. mind and body but if your mind's not still um yeah. i mean i mean you're yeah if your if your mind's still and your body's still it's a whole nother thing but we can have still bodies but our minds are yeah. like you know they're like right they're just like roller coasters and totally. it's like it didn't always it, did, it wasn't always like that right so that's okay but it's again like you said finding the balance to it because mm -hmm. there is balance in technology mm -hmm. but in in certain levels of it like not all of us need to do and get on there every single day on certain things yeah yeah you know right in, in the grand scheme of things it's more habitual things too right it's i don't want to sit with myself yeah I'm gonna... like, oh i'm just i i can't sit here and enjoy the the trees or yeah and i get it too because those things are are built to be addictive and mm -hmm. again they're great tools but they're amazing traps right so that's where it's uh but yeah finding all those things is uh is the balance for me mm -hmm. and uh that's kind of what i've learned out here with the nature was was find the balance mm -hmm. in tech in all things like mm -hmm. In, in so many different things and and that's what's helped me mm -hmm. along with you know um just minimizing my time online and then my my thoughts are really i mean mm -hmm. it's still now because it's i kind of like did an experiment i'm like huh, i got some i got a little money saved up like i'm gonna try this out and yeah see if my mind like can take a break because <laughs> I knew that wasn't like we don't need to be in the past all day long or in the future and yeah and it it um when people say like digital detox they're like ah oh, that sounds kind of like dumb and scary and boring or you know um that's kind of been the vibe I got a little bit but mm -hmm. but it's it's not I mean there's so many things to do while you're not on your phone yeah and yeah. we grew up that way like playing right but we're so our minds are so attached to our right devices right and we and again i'm not judging any of this or yeah. it's it's how it goes and uh mm -hmm. it's how it's built 
yeah. come out of it all. It's like, whoa. Right. Like you live here and you go into a city, you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is <laughs> this is insane. And it's beautiful too, but so, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's been um, really how I've been able to just let go of so many things yeah. and accept myself and stop chasing. Because yeah. men fall into that too, and so do women, but like, uh, the evolution of more chasing things and yeah. you're always like needy the knee i need this yeah now 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 like give right. me my my stuff now right. <laughs> right and just give me more of it and and uh yeah there's there's a there's a balance to that like but we don't see those patterns until we really take a break like yeah and i think that's what's huge for people is yeah. we're, we're trying to heal our ourselves but like in order to to do that in a way it's like you, you need to take a break yeah right you, you gotta you gotta you, you gotta to. just stop like yeah yeah um, i saw that a lot in the in the people who came to my retreat last week and Kason came and did his <laughs> self-love yoga that would just blow your mind that's how i met him and i was like come to my retreat but yeah i saw that it's just like you have space to open up you know so many of them open to so many things like I was kind of like, wow, we're going to have to have some integration with <laughs> some of these guys for quite a while here because they got opened up to some big things. You know, there were a lot yeah. of tears, a lot of laughing releases. It made, brought me so much joy to like be falling asleep and hear a bunch of them cackling outside because they like made friends oh, and they're yeah. hanging out. It was and awesome. It just like, yeah, it opens you when you pause, you know, and um, Anahata Ananda, who was on this, um, out in Sedona, like she considers that like the feminine to her is like pausing that we all have that men and women have. It's just like, I like yen a little more because it gets all mixed up with sexes and stuff. It's like, it's not a girly thing to pause. It's a side of us yeah. that we need. We got to pause. So, and she calls that like where the, like where the stuff for our masculine energy to go create, that's where it's all born. Mm. Right. And yeah. so we go into the pause and like, stuff comes in and sometimes it's kind of a call and then it's like then you take your masculine or your yang yang and you do it and but you got to keep doing both of them you know like it's staying there and yeah it's really important it's really really important to take a pause like that or you just yeah. you're just going down the same neural pathways all the time you're just it's your environment yeah. your setup of your life your the as biological beings like if we didn't have a side of us that got into routines like that we would have to le learn how to walk and talk every day yeah so like we know that we're wired to repeat patterns or we wouldn't be able to walk when we wake up in the morning and yeah. so we do the same thing with our lives we're just it's just like oh i wake up and i do this and i do this and i do this and i do this and, I do this. and when i then like nighttime i binge a bunch of crap and then i watch some netflix and then i scroll my phone and then i go to bed and I, you know, hit the snooze 10 times and I just keep repeating, you know, whatever it yeah. is. Or even if it's, I go to bed at eight and I get it, you know, you just keep doing the same things. And so sure. in that you don't have very much new stimuli. You may have some little stimuli for like opening you up, but not as much as when you fully pause. Then yeah. you're like, you can just see everything. You're like, oh, it's like you get to zoom out on your life and you're like, I, you're looking at it. Right. You know, instead of just being in it, look, trying to look at it, but you're like in it, <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't really see everything because I'm in here. And you come out to something like this and you're just like, especially because you're doing so much stillness, so much nature, so much fun. You know, it's just like you feel where the energy in your regular life doesn't feel like that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. something's got to change, you know. And that's sure. really invaluable, but yeah. we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, yeah. Last thing though, before we do, um, one of the reasons I wanted you to come to my retreat is because <laughs> when you were talking about loving yourself and not taking yourself so seriously <laughs> and being so serious all the time and like just whatever your body wants to do, you know, it's kind of part of your process. And I was like, yes. And it was so nice to have like, a male perspective on that, yeah, that I was like, sure. come to my retreat. Cause I want the men there to hear a dude <laughs> saying the same thing as me. So they don't just think I'm just being, you know, cause men kind of, yeah, they, they kind of, they're like, okay, yeah. Self-love. Like, Oh my God. Like, okay. Can you talk about your thoughts on self-love and how you've achieved that? Like what you do for practices and then like, I don't know what you've experienced from finding that as a man. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, a lot of men don't really love themselves in ways. I mean, right. they do at their core, but they don't know because of the distraction and mm -hmm. levels of that. But mm -hmm. And I was super deep in that, you know, distracted in all those ways of loving myself because, mm -hmm. you know, you pull it, try to pull it from everybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. Try to pull it out of your pocket rather than your own heart. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> But for me, it was, uh, you know, after my experience of being so sick and then like, being able to come out of that really reflecting on that mm -hmm. and um and noticing also everything out here um everything i tried to do for a while was in self-love it's mm -hmm. like ah oh, you're still alive yeah right. <laughs> you get to be alive so right. you better love yourself because yeah. how awesome is this remember when you were laying in the yeah. hospital bed like right. oh my gosh my life i have everything but i have nothing mm -hmm. and so those come back up and and just really, it, it, it is being grateful, but it's mm -hmm. it's also mm -hmm. not being distracted, not being this, and and just letting go of um, expectations of anybody and everything of whatever's going on, because mm -hmm. it just creates another story to look forward to mm -hmm. rather than being here now. Mm -hmm. And for me, I mean, it's it's been also the things that we do out here. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, for a year, I, I've been... The last couple of years, I've kind of just been playing because I'm yeah. like, I, I need to play because I've been yeah. working so much and yeah. and humans still play. Like yeah. and out here, I learned, I was like, oh, wow, there's a dance three or four times a week and mm -hmm. I can just go dancing. And, and now my job is to take people dancing and, yeah. and give them some instructions on like super conscious dancing <laughs> by the way he's not just talking he's not talking club whatever no, no but this is like a whole different thing <laughs> it's like some beautiful light beings all being beautiful <laughs> but yeah embodying that into my love and through my dance i noticed myself talk and i was like dude i'm so grateful for this moment this experience yeah, yeah. i'm dancing in hawaii like yeah i'm bringing these five men that I just met and they're dancing too and yeah, they're so smiling, grateful. they're laughing. Right. Like, um, and also another thing that I did is when we look in the mirror, we, we judge ourselves pretty, pretty often. Yeah. Like judgment comes in. Right. Because again, we're looking at our screens and we're judging ourselves too hard. And it's like, mm -hmm. like all these. And so I just really started to, to notice that and, and mm -hmm. be present with myself in the mm -hmm. mirror and like, nice. And I know it's kind of cliche, but like if you're looking in the mirror and you're judging yourself, mm -hmm. and some people may be looking in the mirror and not noticing they're judging themselves because yeah. they're so deep in their right. judgments, and that's okay. But like I really slowing the mind down and uh, being present with myself mm -hmm. where, where I really am in, in this day and age and time, like how lucky are we that we're still alive and yeah. get to experience this because yeah. it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So... It was a lot of self-talk yeah. and a lot of like not chasing women, not being on dating apps, not chasing money. Like yeah. I know what I'm doing is beautiful and yeah. powerful and yeah. you know, there's been several people that have experienced it and, and it's for them and it's, we all have so much love, of, love inside of us and people may like judge that and be like, oh yeah, yeah. But we, we really do when mm -hmm. we slow down mm -hmm. and we're not like mm -hmm. thinking about like, collecting coins or other mm -hmm. things and like we're just like holy shit this mm -hmm. human experience this body like um that's you know the, the wealth is is our greatest health or yeah something like that i'm not sure but yeah and that and that for me getting my body back and and then reflecting and be like you were doing all these things and now you get to be here now and show people how to just be a little happier mm -hmm. like we don't need to be so reactive because mm -hmm. we're very reactive mm -hmm. in a reactive world. And again, no judgment, but like you, our phones make us react whether yeah. you, you agree with that or not. Like oh, it, totally. it's a, it's a reactive thing. And, and then minds start to react and people react and it just gets bottled. But yeah. um, noticing that reaction, mm -hmm. noticing that judgment, like, Oh, I'm reacting because somebody said something on this and I don't agree with it. Like, because right. I, it right. doesn't matter right so doing that and i stopped taking my life so seriously mm. you know i took my life so seriously and uh that's it's good it's how i got to here but mm -hmm. you know it it doesn't matter like <laughs> after almost facing death several times you're like 
okay, I'm grateful. I'll slow down and yeah. don't let me, give me another chance. Yeah. It'll, I'll, I'll make it work. So but yeah, yeah self-talk is, is mm. huge because, yeah. The universe kept telling you, enjoy. <laughs> hey, enjoy. Hey, Yeah. you forgot to enjoy more. You don't yeah. have to, you don't have to do anything. And it's really beautiful because you're in that surrender space, yeah. you know, and it takes courage to be in surrender. Um, you had a nice help because you got kicked in the ball. So then you like <laughs> really were like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll surrender God, you know, and a lot of us have had those in different ways and yours led you here. And it's beautiful that you choose to give back, choose to lend a hand back out because yeah. you're like, there's a lot of people here. That, you know, I could just exist. I could, I'm fine. Like I could do it, but I want to help because it, yeah, it just pulls you because it was so meaningful. So thanks for being willing. And um, yeah. thanks for sharing everything with us. <laughs> for sure. With these guys. And yeah. um, I'm sure you will be seeing some more case and, and, and stuff that I'll be, we're looking at putting some things together. So TBA, we're, we're brain, and brainstorming still, but um, hopefully some, some little events and possibly <laughs> bigger events. But if you want to come out here and do case and thing, I'll link up his website for you guys. I can't recommend it enough. It's life changing. It's yeah, it's not even. It's not just cool. It's, it's a whole another <laughs> level. I don't even. There's no words. It's really made an impact on me, and so thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. All right, guys. We out. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.